Rick Geike here with HomeGardeningForBeginners.org. I'm going to give you some good reasons why you should be raising a worm farm, as well as 10 simple steps on how to build and maintain your own worm farm. Why raise worms? You can turn your food waste into eco-friendly, economic, organic fertilizer. Keep kitchen scraps out of the landfill. Children love to learn how food scraps are turned into soil. Worm castings are an excellent soil additive which provide live organisms such as microbes, bacteria, fungi, and protozoan which help keep the soil alive and thriving. The materials you'll need to get started is a 20 gallon opaque tote, bedding material to fill the tote halfway, a cup of starter soil from the garden, and a thousand red wiggler worms. The only equipment you'll need is a thermometer, an electric drill, and a 3 8 inch drill bit. I'm going to give you 10 simple steps to get your worm farm started. First step is to drill 125 3 8 inch holes in the lid away from the edge. This provides enough ventilation to let the unwanted gases out develop during the decomposition process and also allows enough shade for the worms to thrive. The second step includes filling the tote half full with recycled paper products. Good ones to get started with are non-glossy newsprint, paper towels and toilet paper rolls, as well as brown paper bags and corrugated cardboard. Other good worm bed materials include paper egg cartons, peat moss, coconut core, and leaf mold. You might also want to try well-rotted straw and hay, as well as coarse compost and well-aged manures. Starting with a large piece of corrugated cardboard in the bottom of the tote will help absorb any excess moisture. Your success rate will increase if you use a variety of different worm bedding materials. The worm bedding materials that you should avoid are pine straw, fresh lawn clippings, fresh straw and hay, and fresh animal manures. Step 3 is to add a cup of garden soil in order to get the action of bacteria started. When I put the water in, it's going to help take some of those items that are in the soil down in. It will help the decomposition process. Add enough water to reach a 60 to 90 percent moisture level in the worm bedding. We put in about a gallon of water when this tub was halfway full of the uh, dry product and it goes down that much. You can see that the water really does get absorbed into this material. Step five is to let the tote acclimate for three to five days uh, for temperature and for moisture. By moving the material around you can better distribute the moisture. Step six is to find a location between the ideal temperatures of 59 degrees and 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. The ideal temperature for worms are 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. For best results, add 1,000 red wiggler worms a quarter of an inch under the bedding. Well, it's been several days and it's time to put the worms in. The more worms that you put in here from the start, the quicker these worms will compost this particular material down. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put a little material over the top. Step 8. Select the proper worm food. Good worm food consists of kitchen scraps made from grain products, vegetables, and fruits. Worms will eat any raw kitchen scraps, but by aging, chopping, cooking, or freezing materials, it makes it easier for their worms to eat. Worms can benefit from crushed eggshells. They can also put up with some tea bags, coffee, and coffee filters, but don't overdo it. Avoid kitchen scraps that are extremely salty, spicy, or have onions, peppers, meats, fats, grease, or bones. Avoid dairy products. Avoid citrus products. When choosing worm food, avoid high proteins and fresh animal manures and urine. I'm going to put this right on top of where the worms went in. I'm going to spread those out. Here's a piece of broccoli. Here's an old cucumber that went bad on us. Here's some apple peels and cores. Here's old banana peel, some carrots, some celery. Now on top of this, we'll put a couple more layers of uh, material. And the reason we do that is so the worms stay moist. It's best if the worms have too little to eat rather than too much. And it's not like we're starving them because they can eat the, the paper. Check your worm farm one or two times a week for general worm health, the temperature, the availability of worm food, the quality of bedding, and the moisture level. Make any adjustments as needed. You see it's uh, quite moist. There's a worm in there, but like I said, they're pretty equally distributed, which is a good sign. We're pretty close to the right temperature. We're supposed to be at about 77 for the ideal temperature. It's a little bit closer to 80 at the present time. And as you can see, all the food that we gave our worms are no longer in this particular area. 
the worms have eaten the food and have distributed themselves amongst the paper here. We're going to go over on this corner, so the next time I go to check the food, I know that this is the particular area that I'll want to check. This feeding will consist of rice, barley, and potato peelings. It's a good idea to use a variety of worm food. Each time we add worm food, we'll add some additional worm bedding. We're quite dry there, so we're going to add some additional water, especially in this area here. And what that does is it gives a little moisture on top of the worms so they're they feel comfortable in coming up and eating the food that was just put here in this corner. We don't want to disturb them. We want to keep them as calm and as undisturbed as possible. As you continue to feed the worms, you'll notice that the worm bedding is getting a darker color as a result of the worm castings. The higher concentration of worm castings indicates that you need to use additional bedding. As the bedding comes within six inches of the top of the tote, it's time to harvest the worm castings and the worms and start the process over again. Reserve at least a thousand worms and two cups of worm castings to start your next worm farm. Worm waste or worm castings provide a wonderful soil additive for your garden or potted plants. It provides not only nutrients to the soil, but also provides living organisms such as bacteria, fungi, and protozoan, which help keep the soil alive and growing. Below this video is a link to the 10 steps to starting and maintaining your own worm farm. I hope I've convinced you to start your own worm farm. By following my 10 simple steps, you too will be able to start and maintain your own worm farm. This is Rick Godkey from HomeGardeningForBeginners.org.